Hello there, my name is Patricia and I'm 38 years old. It's sad but true that many women have faced harsh treatment from their in-laws. I'm no exception, but my story is a bit unique, something many might find hard to connect with, especially when it comes to standing up for oneself and seeking a form of redress. I was fortunate enough to make a difference in my situation and I'm sharing my journey in the hopes it might inspire others who are enduring similar trials to stand up against the mistreatment they face. Everything changed the day my husband Andrew came to me with a revelation. He said, I need to tell you something important. Naturally, I was worried, asking him if everything was okay. His response was a grave no, followed by him confessing he had witnessed his mom and sister committing a horrendous act. This admission was a turning point because, until then, Andrew had never believed my complaints about the cruel behaviors of Susan and Lisa, my mother-in-law and sister-in-law. They had made it their mission to belittle and embarrass me, from ruining my clothes during special events to messing with my food and drinks, ensuring I'd make a fool of myself in public, and even going as far as to badmouth my own business venture. They were upset I had taken their precious boy away. Despite repeatedly telling Andrew about their actions, he hadn't taken my side until now. Curious, I asked him, what made you finally see the truth? He showed me security footage from our business, proof of their malicious acts. Together, Andrew and I run a business focused on crochet, offering everything from baby attire to handbags. It was largely my brainchild, and we were enjoying success until his mother and sister began their attempts to dissuade me from pursuing this dream. They doubted my capabilities, insultingly suggesting I wasn't smart or skilled enough to be a businessman, hinting I'd be better off as a homemaker or a regular employee rather than chasing my dreams of running a business. This situation sheds light on the relentless efforts by these two women to undermine my happiness and achievements, constantly trying to hold me back from pursuing what brought joy into my life. It seemed clear to me that jealousy must have been the root of their actions. Why else would they go to such extreme lengths to undermine me? My hunch about their malicious intent became undeniable when Andrew finally witnessed the evidence for himself. Despite my previous attempts to show him the truth through tears and ruined dresses, spoiled food, and their baseless criticisms of my business, he needed tangible proof, and that proof came through shocking video footage, to say the least. The video Andrew showed me displayed a disheartening scene. We saw two figures, masked but distinctly feminine in build, one taller and the other shorter, maliciously vandalizing our shop with spray paint. Andrew drew my attention to a detail I had initially overlooked, a unique necklace worn by one of the vandals. It was unmistakably similar to the distinctive piece Andrew had gifted his mother, Susan, from Hawaii. This revelation solidified my suspicions. I see what you mean, I admitted finally feeling validated in my concerns. It must be them. The floodgates opened and I found myself overwhelmed by a mix of emotions. Frustration and pain from Andrew's delayed acknowledgement of my plight, mixed with a sense of relief that he finally understood what I had been enduring. I hesitated to accuse his family directly, given their relationship, Yet I longed for justice and contemplated the best way to seek revenge for their continual sabotage. As if on cue, Andrew received a call from Lisa. With an ironic twist of timing, she informed him about Uncle Jacob's return and the planned family reunion for the weekend. Are you planning to confront them about what we discovered? I inquired, uncertain if Andrew would choose to address the wrongdoing. He expressed his conflict between loyalty to his family and supporting me. I want to, but it's difficult. That's my mother and sister, he confessed. However, he reassured me, if you decide to confront them, I'll support you in every way possible. As the weekend approached, we were faced with a dilemma. 
to confront the family with the truth of their actions or find another way to address the injustice. Andrew's willingness to stand by me, despite the complexity of the situation, marked a pivotal moment in our struggle against the unwarranted hostility from his family. Andrew and I made our way to Susan's home bright and early, eager to lend a hand with the preparations for the grand feast in honor of Uncle Jacob's return. His homecoming was a big deal to everyone in the family, given his beloved status and having been away for so long. The air was thick with anticipation, promising a day filled with joy and reunion. Upon our arrival, I immediately sensed a change in atmosphere. Susan and Lisa, who had been all smiles and warmth, suddenly adopted expressions of thinly veiled jealousy and disdain at our presence. Oh, you two are here early, Susan remarked, her voice dripping with a feigned sweetness. Yeah, Mom, we thought we'd come by to help out, considering how many folks are expected today, Andrew responded, ever the peacemaker. Oh, aren't you just the kindest, she replied, though her eyes said differently when they landed on me as if accusing me of an unnamed crime. Then, with all the grace of a serpent, Susan commented on the vandalism of our business, a tragedy she had conveniently noticed. Lisa chimed in, echoing her mother's faux sorrow. Their performance was almost comical, save for the venom behind their words. They barely concealed their glee, nearly breaking into laughter at their deceit. I bit back my anger, choosing instead to feign ignorance. Now wasn't the time for confrontation. I was waiting for the perfect moment to reveal their treachery. Andrew played along, not wanting to stir the pot prematurely. It's devastating, truly. We can't imagine who would do such a thing, we said in unison, our tone dripping with irony. Their response to our mention of involving the police was predictably defensive. Police? For a minor act? Surely it was just kids messing around, Lisa hastily interjected, her attempt to downplay the incident as clear as day. Oh, Lisa, it's heartwarming how you worry about these kids, I replied, my voice laced with sarcasm. But regardless of their intentions, they need to be held accountable. After all, ignorance isn't a valid excuse for such actions. Our exchange was more than just pleasantries. It was a chess game, and I was biding my time, waiting for the right move to expose their malevolence fully. The day was still young, and the feast was only just beginning. Susan seemed to agree with Lisa's attempt to minimize the situation, throwing in a reminder about the folly of youth to dissuade us from taking the vandalism seriously. Remember the foolish things you did as a teenager? Let's not overthink this. We have a party to prepare for, she said, attempting to deflect and redirect our focus. It was clear from their nervous demeanor that our mention of police involvement had struck a nerve. Despite their efforts to appear unconcerned, the tension was palpable. Andrew and I shared a meaningful glance, silently agreeing to keep up our act while we assisted with the party preparations. We devoted the morning and early afternoon to getting everything in order, cooking, cleaning, and setting up. By 4 p.m., the family began to gather, bringing the long-awaited reunion into full swing. As we took a moment to relax amidst the bustle, Andrew pulled me aside with a serious look on his face. He handed me a concealed microphone. Wear this, he urged, explaining his plan in a whisper filled with mixed emotions. I know I'm not confrontational enough to challenge my mother and sister directly. I might not be the assertive figure you hoped for, but this way, you can uncover the truth on your terms. You're stronger than me. With this mic, you can gather the evidence we need for justice. Taking his words to heart, I recognized the gesture for what it was, a different kind of support. So I clipped on the microphone, hit the record button, and began my covert mission. It wasn't long before I stumbled upon Susan and Lisa in the kitchen, embroiled in a tense conversation. Pausing by the door, I listened in, not wanting to alert them to my presence. Lisa's voice was laced with anxiety. She knows everything, Mom. Didn't you see how she was looking at us? 
she hissed. Quiet, Lisa. You're being paranoid. She has no idea it was us, Susan retorted, her tone sharp yet tinged with uncertainty. I'm telling you, she knows. I can feel it. Lisa insisted, panic rising in her voice. Even if she suspects something, what can she really do about it? Susan attempted to reassure her, though the confidence seemed forced. Remember, Andrew is on our side, and she, she loves Andrew. If she found out and tried to tell him, he'd never believe her over us. Their words, captured by the microphone, were more than just incriminating. They were a revelation of their true nature and the depths of their deception. As I stood there, the reality of their betrayal sinking in, I knew this recording would change everything. Their conversation revealed a history of their schemes, each more cunning and spiteful than the last. They reminisced about how they had sabotaged me before, staining my dress before an important presentation and spoiling my food and drinks. They believed that Andrew's love for them would always overshadow any doubts about their character, ensuring their misdeeds remained unpunished. Their confidence in this pattern of manipulation was evident. Unable to contain my frustration with their sinister dialogue any longer, I decided to confront them directly. Despite my initial plan to gather evidence discreetly, I worried the microphone might not have captured their admissions from a distance. It was crucial to get closer, not just for the recording, but to challenge them face to face. I entered the room abruptly, feigning innocence. Hey, is there anything else we need to do before Uncle Jacob arrives? I asked, startling them. Their reactions were a mix of surprise and feigned concern, with Susan chastising me for startling her, claiming a weak heart. My reply was tinged with sarcasm, not too weak it seems, hinting at her unexpected vitality for her age. Curious, Susan inquired what I meant, leading me to insinuate I had seen her engaging in some rather energetic, if not nefarious, activities recently, dressed all in black and masked. The room tensed at my description, their brief pause revealing I had struck a nerve. Pressing further, I hinted at having seen something quite incriminating. Their defense was quick and nervous, a failed attempt to feign ignorance. I then suggested the presence of another masked accomplice in these dubious activities. Their denial was cut short as I decided it was time to unveil my trump card. Ignoring their attempts to deflect, I pulled out the video Andrew had shown me. The footage served as undeniable proof of their malice, capturing their actions against me and my business. The revelation was met with shock and silence. It was a moment of triumph, not just for confronting them with their deeds, but for standing up against their continuous attempts to undermine me. This evidence was irrefutable, marking a pivotal moment in our ongoing family drama. In the face of their denial, and attempts to downplay the situation, I stood my ground, emphasizing the gravity of their actions. This is a very serious matter, I insisted, urging them to look closer at the evidence displayed on my phone. Their expressions shifted dramatically from dismissive arrogance to outright panic as they realized the footage irrefutably implicated them in the act of vandalism against my business. Lisa's attempt to deflect was quickly shut down by Susan's desperate plea for silence. However, the pressure was too much for Lisa, who confessed out of guilt and fear. Susan's denial crumbled as Lisa admitted to their crime, leaving them with no room to maneuver. Their confession quickly turned to defiance. They taunted me, believing they were untouchable due to Andrew's loyalty to his family. They underestimated me, though, thinking I would be paralyzed by Andrew's potential inaction. Their smugness only fueled my resolve. Andrew's affection for you may indeed be strong, and perhaps he won't intervene. But what makes you think I'll stand idly by after you targeted my business, my passion? I countered. My determination was clear. As they lunged for my phone in a desperate attempt to erase their confession, I dodged them, 
my agility surpassing their expectations. Their threats escalated as they realized their position was precarious, but I remained unfazed, aware that the evidence was securely backed up beyond their reach. Even if you manage to take this phone from me, the evidence is already secured elsewhere. Making threats only worsens your situation, I warned, standing my ground against their intimidation. Lisa's threats became more sinister, yet they seemed hollow in the face of their exposed wrongdoing. I confronted their aggression with a calm yet firm stance, ready to defend my livelihood against their vindictiveness, demonstrating that their attempts to bully and scare me would not deter my pursuit of justice. The tension in the kitchen was palpable as Susan and Lisa's threats escalated into a chaotic chase. I dodged them deftly, my fear mixed with determination. The moment I managed to fling the door open, relief washed over me as I saw Andrew standing there, clueless to the commotion that had unfolded just seconds before. Help me! Your mom and sister are out of control! I exclaimed, desperate for his intervention. Andrew, caught off guard, could only ask what was happening as Susan quickly twisted the narrative, claiming I was the aggressor, falsely accusing them of vandalism and threatening violence. Andrew was visibly torn, stuttering and struggling to find the right words. My heart sank as I urged him to stand by me, to defend our shared truth against the deceit spun by his family. Yet he remained silent, a clear sign of his inner conflict. Susan seized the moment to assert their bond with Andrew, insinuating his loyalty would always lie with them, not with me. Andrew attempted to mediate, professing his equal love for us all, but his indecision only deepened the divide. I reminded him of the irrefutable evidence he had shown me, pushing him to acknowledge the truth. Andrew finally spoke up, Admitting the vandalism and the continuous harassment I faced were unjust, pleading for a resolution that seemed impossible. As I declared my intent to press charges, Uncle Jacob entered, oblivious to the underlying tension, eager to join the festivities. Susan and Lisa, undeterred, continued their threats, warning Andrew of dire consequences should I take any legal action. Their manipulation didn't stop there. They dared to question Andrew's autonomy, suggesting he would side with them out of obligation rather than reason. Andrew's hesitation only fueled their narrative, casting doubt on his support for me. The situation reached a heartbreaking impasse. With Andrew unable to voice his stance clearly, his silence speaks volumes about the complexities of family loyalty and the painful choice between truth and ties. In a whirlwind of emotion, I stormed off to join the large gathering at the grand dining table, seating around 30 guests. Despite the storm raging within me, I managed to take my seat with a semblance of calm, determined not to let my turmoil show. Andrew and Lisa soon took their places nearby, and though Andrew cast me glances full of unspoken words, my anger toward him kept our conversation at bay. The arrival of Susan and Uncle Jacob signaled the start of the celebration, an awkward attempt to brush past the tension that had escalated just moments before. As the meal progressed, my anger refused to be quelled, bubbling up until I could no longer contain it. Seizing a moment of silence, I stood up, commanding the attention of everyone present. I have something crucial to share. I announced, my voice steady despite the chaos of emotions within. There are two among us who have deliberately sought to make my life miserable. Without naming them directly, I let the recorded argument play, laying bare the malevolence of Lisa and Susan for all to hear. The room was filled with gas and murmurs of disbelief as their scheme was exposed. Lisa and Susan, petrified in their seats, could only watch as their deceit was revealed, yet they still attempted to discredit me, accusing me of fabricating the entire ordeal for attention. The dinner descended into an uproar, with accusations flying back and forth, the family scrambling to grasp the full extent of the betrayal. 
Amidst the chaos, Andrew remained silent, a silence that was abruptly broken by the sound of approaching sirens. The tension escalated as Susan, in a fit of rage, accused me of orchestrating their downfall. I didn't do anything, I protested, truthfully unaware of the police's imminent arrival. It was Andrew who confessed to calling the authorities. I did it, he admitted, revealing his hand in bringing their actions to light. His words marked a turning point, not only acknowledging the wrongs done against me, but also pledging his support going forward. He admitted to the recording that had played, providing the evidence needed for the police's involvement. Andrew's declaration was a plea for accountability, recognizing the long overdue need to stand by his wife and confront the injustices I had faced. This is about right and wrong, he said, addressing his family with a newfound resolve. Mom, Lisa, it's time to face the consequences of your actions. As the police arrived, the reality of the situation set in. Andrew's intervention was not just an act of support for me, but a crucial step towards restoring justice and integrity within the family. It was a moment of reckoning, underscoring the importance of standing up for what is right, even when it means confronting those closest to us. The moment the police arrived at our house, they went straight to Susan, who was shouting and making a scene. Lisa tried to make a run for it, but she didn't get far before the police caught up with her. Both were clearly embarrassed as they were taken out of the house, throwing angry looks my way and calling me names. They even called Andrew a traitor as they passed by him. After they were taken away, the mood lightened up a lot. We all started talking about how difficult it had been dealing with Susan and Lisa. Uncle Jacob even joked he'd prefer jail over spending another minute with them. The rest of the family reunion went on to become one of the best we've ever had, all thanks to their absence. Later that night, our phone started ringing with calls from jail. It was Susan and Lisa trying to reach out to family members. Some of us talked to them saying they needed this time behind bars to think about their actions. A few pretended the call was breaking up, but most didn't bother to pick up the phone at all. Andrew's decision to call the police brought us closer. It was a turning point in our relationship. Susan and Lisa eventually got out of jail but had to pay for the damage they caused, which must have hurt their pride. Now, whenever we run into each other, the smug looks they used to give have been replaced by embarrassment and worry. Getting back at them for everything they did felt incredibly satisfying.